I'm not going to waste one second of your time. My name is Varun Maya and I've been writing code for 17 years. I started on a coding language called Delphi that most people don't even remember today. Not only that, I've been doing design starting with Photoshop from 11 years. I moved from Photoshop to Sketch to Figma to even things like World Creator. But in all those years, I have never once believed that AI will take over creative jobs. I've been a non-believer. But in the last two years, in the light of incredible evidence, I have changed my mind. An artificially intelligent machine is becoming a bigger part of everyday life. So in this video, I'm going to tell you how powerful AI has become over the last two years, why I am preparing myself, and what you can do about it, and how you can survive in an AI-dominated future. By the end of this video, I'm also going to teach you where you can go and try this AI right now so that you can also see the evidence that I saw. Now, if you don't believe me, if you think there's something special and incredible about human creativity, prepare for a shock. Just stay till the ending and then leave your comments. Now, OpenAI released a new image generation technology called DALI2 that basically uses information from the entire internet to come up with new and novel images. The first thing I did was to actually draw a picture of Elon Musk fighting the Hulk. Now this looks like it was made by a real artist. If you had told me in 2015 that this was made by AI, I would have laughed at you. <laughs> Next, I asked Dali to generate an oil painting of Spider-Man. As you can see, this is pretty good. It's almost as good as an artist, if not better. I wouldn't be able to tell and I can guarantee you 99% of the population wouldn't be able to tell. Then I put up my display picture into DALI 2 and asked it to generate variants of me. As you can see, um, all of these people look very funny but most importantly they do not exist. They are just variants of me that DALI is creating in real time. Which one of us are you? Finally, I wondered whether DALI can create logos. I put up this lovely picture of a monkey logo that I had seen on Dribbble and asked it to create more variants. So many awesome variants were created that I had to pick one up and put it on a t-shirt just because of how good it looked. You see, I was going to contact the artist of the original design and ask him to make one more for me, but AI has sort of taken that opportunity away and it is going to take the opportunity away from many such creative professionals. Now you might say, well, Varun, that was images. What about text? Well, let's get to text. OpenAI was released a couple of years ago, and I'm going to show you some examples in real time of how it answers certain questions. For example, I made OpenAI write an email to Ankur Variku asking for a job. As you can see, the AI understands that Ankur works at Nearby or worked at Nearby and also understands that he's in the startup space. This is a very well-crafted email and better than 99% of the cold DMs that I receive. Next, I asked it to create a rap song created by Batman or on behalf of Batman and it came up with something spectacular. These associations are something that AI has been picking up on for many years. Now, there might still be some people in the audience that say, Varun, music! What about music? Music is so special. Well, too bad. OpenAI created something called the Jukebox, where it has original, completely original tracks from any genre you want. In fact, music seems to be one of the easier things to replicate because it's not just OpenAI, there are tools like Ava that are able to generate tracks of any genre. In fact, the song or the background music for this particular video is made by AI. Not only that, so is the thumbnail and also 90% of the script. I only needed to add in the data and the figures and the research. I put up a reel very recently about how AI is going to take over creative jobs. First creative jobs are going to go. And a lot of people replied on that saying, this idiot does not understand creativity. Creativity is special. Well, let me tell you a little bit about me. I was a Bloomsbury published author. In fact, we wrote a bestseller called Pajama Profit that predicted remote work three years before it happened. Next, I was actually the youngest entrepreneur in India to raise money for a visual job platform. We took Nokri.com and made it very visual. This was unique at the time. Being a software engineer and a designer, I've also made games. Games that many people have played and many people have enjoyed. One of my favorite ones is something called Mumbai Mek Hadsa, where I tell the horror story of a woman going through her life in Mumbai after death. 
I also replicated myself as a 3D virtual avatar many years before Unreal launched MetaHuman. Next, I even put up a trailer one entire year before Facebook did about the word metaverse, talking about how the future is going to be a metaverse. One year before Facebook rebranded to Meta. In fact, I even named my company Meta thinking that that is the future. Now, I'm not telling you all of this to brag. I'm telling you all of this because I'm not just some random YouTuber. I have been creative. I continue to be creative and I am shit scared of AI and so should you. I have the humility to say that this is going to replace many functions of my job in the next few years, I wonder why 16 year olds on YouTube do not believe the same thing. Now, some people will still harp on creativity and say, no, Varun, creativity, human, special. Shut the up. You have no idea what creativity is. You have a sense of what creativity is. You think it comes from the sky. Scientists have been studying creativity for 20 years. There are full peer-reviewed research papers on creativity. There are studies of how creativity works and it turns out that AI just replicates those same things. So what I want to do right now is talk about creativity. I want to break it open for you and show you how it happens. So let's assume there are two kinds of digital jobs that humans can do. One are bounded jobs and the other are unbounded. Bounded jobs mean that there is a skill cap, there is a ceiling, there's a score to the job. It is unbounded, well, there's no way to keep a score. You can't compare my videos to, let's say, somebody else's video, right? Because we'll all have our different styles, we'll all do it in different ways. Now, over the last few years, we've all known that AI has been replacing bounded jobs, right? If it's detecting cancer, AI has been doing a better job. Well, the future of diagnosing breast cancer may be in the hands of artificial intelligence. If it's about protein folding, AI has solved the 50-year-old grand challenge of protein folding. AI has already beaten the world champions at Go. It has already beaten the world champions at chess and has also played really well at Dota. In fact, Dota was one of the first few demonstrations of AI where when I watched the match, I saw and I realized that this is the future because Dota is not really a bounded game. There's a lot of creativity in how you play and there are so many different variables because each character in Dota has four skills and there are hundreds of characters. So lots of permutations and combinations and AI was doing that very well. But forget about bounded jobs. That's not where creativity comes in. Let's talk about the unbounded ones. Chatting with people, creating paintings, creating music, right? These are things you can't really easily compare to humans. But when you look at something nice, it evokes an emotion inside you. How the hell is AI supposed to compete with that? Well, I never believed that AI could take over unbounded jobs. But in 2019, NVIDIA put out this beautiful song. The song was so inspiring and emotional, I wondered, how is it that a machine created this? And then I got the answer that the machine was indeed using existing music from real people and mashing it together in ways we do not understand. It turns out that real creativity in the human brain works exactly the same way. And now I'm going to reveal the formula for creativity. It is to take an object and to place that object into a completely alien surrounding. is to take things from different domains and mash them together to make something brand new. Like taking Maggi and putting it into milk, most of the time, real human creativity produces rubbish. But sometimes, it revolutionizes the world. Take the example of the Beatles. Until then, it was always a norm that most rock and roll artists mostly used rock and roll. But the Beatles had very special music. Their music wasn't confined to a single or maybe two genres. It was more diverse and versatile. They started with rock and roll, then they stretched it to folk, psychedelic, indie, ballads. They mixed and matched and created new things. The fact that they chose to include sitar in the song Love You Too, Within You, Without You, and Sound of Moving Tapes in Tomorrow Never Knows showed that they truly understood creativity. Take the example of boxing. One of the greatest boxers in the ring, Muhammad Ali, was once known for his very special style called the shuffle. Muhammad Ali was such a creative boxer that he took something from dance and brought it into the art of boxing. What he did not only confused his opponents, it also created a new style that was unpredictable to a defender. Next, take the example of the monster Godzilla. 
To make the roar of the animal, people took the sound of rusty car doors and metal rubbing against each other. I know we're getting deep into examples, but take the example of Francis Crick and Watson, who actually came up with the structure of DNA. Watson claimed that he had a dream where he saw snakes entangled over each other. Now imagine if Watson didn't have exposure to snakes or never saw those snakes. He would never have come up with the idea. You need to have that substrate, that baseline to mash together. This is why tech companies are considered so innovative because they take something that already exists in the real world and add computer science to it. Zomato is just restaurants digitized, Airbnb is hotels and stays digitized, so on and so forth. This is what makes them innovative because they're mashing two weird domains that have not been mashed before. Everything you have ever done is either the same or a variant of something your parents or your environment has done in the past. In other words, creativity is the brain's ability to remix different elements. Let's call these elements substrates, but it cannot use elements or substrates it doesn't know. For example, you can't think of a new color. A blind person, a blind from birth person, will never see visuals in their dreams. Dreams are, of course, the original remix machine. When I dream, I, I don't see anything because my subconscious doesn't know how to see, therefore I can't see in my dreams, right? See, Christine remembers what it's like to see in, in her brain, but for me, I don't. So I, I dream in my other four senses. I can smell, taste, touch, and hear in my dreams, but I don't see anything. That's the thing about creativity. You, me, Bach, Beethoven, everyone else who you know who you think is creative has never created anything original in their life. It has always been mashups and that's why there's the quote, steal like an artist because we don't know what substrate they used because they mashed it up beyond recognition. Now some of you might think this all happened after the invention of the internet. Artists before the internet were creative. In fact, Dragon Ball is a mashup of Sun Wukong and Superman. Even the original artists claim so. Now I will tell you something even further that's going to blow your brains. Sun Wukong himself is not an original character. His inspiration comes from an amalgam of Indian and Chinese culture. The Monkey King was possibly influenced by the Hindu deity Hanuman which is the monkey god as we all know from the Ramayana. This is because there were stories of the monkey god Hanuman that were passed to Buddhist travelers who traveled to China via India. The monkey king's origin story includes the wind blowing on a stone whereas Hanuman is the son of the god of wind. It absolutely blows my brains that a character like Goku, an anime character that I grew up watching, can be a re-rendition of Hanuman who I've read about since I was even younger. And a lot of us still believe in the myth that creativity exists in the right brain. That is absolutely false. All the creativity researchers will go on record telling you that creativity stems from multiple parts of the brain working in unison. Studies of children in particular show that watching something else creative, viewing a fantasy film, an unstructured play encourages new insights, analytical thinking and creativity. The more that children are exposed to novel situations, the more creative they become later in life. Basically, you are giving them substrates that they can remix and mash up later in life. Exposure to something and the ability to remix are all that's required for creativity and that is exactly what AI does. In the case of DALI, it is a remix machine but like the human brain, understands the relationships between things. It knows the relationship between astronaut and person and between person and riding and between riding and horse. Even though the word person isn't mentioned in this query, the AI has a relationship mapped so it knows it should show the astronaut with his legs folded on top of the horse. Now you might think, what about the actors in the picture Varun? What about the words? Well, the AI also has a map of pixel to pixel relationships. The transformer in DALI is what allows the model to generate new images that accurately fit within a given text prompt. It learns how language and images fit together so that when you ask the model, uh, please give me an armchair in the shape of an avocado, it is able to spit out some super creative designs that you have never thought of or seen before. The link between textual semantics and their visual representations is learnt by another OpenAI model called CLIP, which stands for Contrastive Language Image Pre-Training. CLIP is trained on hundreds of millions of images and their associated captions far more exposure than the human brain has. So essentially, DALI is taking content and remixing it exactly the same way you and I would do, except it has far more data. Now, if you look at DALI 1, 
you'll see that many of the images it put out were garbage. But Dali 2 is so much better, I am afraid of what comes next. Beyond just creative and accurate designs, the transformer in DALI also seems to understand some common sense physics. For example, you could ask it for an illustration of a baby panda wearing headphones staring at a reflection in its mirror and it will create this all the way down to the details of the mirror's reflection. Now don't get me wrong, AI doesn't understand what's going on. DALI doesn't understand what a horse is or a human is. It just understands the relationship between these two things and is able to come up with creative output. Most scientists believe that the human brain uses similar software but with different hardware. Your brain has an encoder that maps various visual objects in your memory. You know what my face is like because you're seeing it right now and you've committed it to memory. If you subscribe, you'll see my face even more often. Now if you go into a garden, your brain is not randomly going to start putting my face over all the trees. It doesn't do that because your brain knows how to maintain context. However, when you go to sleep or when you're on psychedelic drugs, the brain context machine actually breaks down. Whatever you were thinking of unconsciously gets pasted onto your surroundings. What you just saw looks almost exactly like what Google Deep Dream does. The images that Google Deep Dream produces look almost exactly like hallucinatory or psychedelic experiences of human beings where that context part of the transcoder disappears. Now let's get back to creative jobs. Look, the top 1% of jobs are never going anywhere. If you're the top 1% musician, you're probably going to use AI. It's going to make your life easier. If you're a top 1% YouTuber, you'll make YouTube videos, but you might use AI to generate thumbnails, right? So you're not going anywhere. My worry is with the 99% of India that is not that good. When I saw OpenAI create a cold email to Variku, I have seen that versus the cold emails I get, I feel sad and scared for this country. Because AI is easily able to mash up all this data, it can beat out thumbnail designers, uh, average musicians, average video creators, and so on and so forth. Because I've seen the jump from DALI 1 to DALI 2, I know how much is at stake when a DALI 3 comes out. Now enough scaremongering, right? Here are the three things you can do to actually beat out AI. Number one, learn and master English. I know a lot of Indians are allergic to English. We always say, hey, why should we learn English? You know, regional languages are better. That may be true, but opportunities and AI has been trained on the English language. The captions that were fed to DALI 2 are all in English. If you master English, then you have the ability to create anything. That creativity can be in your hands. So the people who can speak well are going to be able to control the future. More importantly, OpenAI uses a technology called lossless compression. If you give it two words and say, Spider-Man script, it might give you many pages of a script because it can keep producing bullshit based on, you know, hundreds of thousands of or millions of content pieces it already has. But if you write more words, if you give it more specificity, you can mold the output. It's like a clay pot, right? When it's spinning, you can touch it in different areas to make it exactly the pot you want. Otherwise, it'll create something of its own will. So, the better you know English, the more context you are able to give it. The next thing you can do, and this is much harder to do, is to gain some sort of distribution or trust. AI cannot create a YouTube channel tomorrow and have hundreds of thousands of views. The attention of the audience is not something that AI has right now. So if you made a YouTube channel or you wrote a blog or you had a Twitter page, we had even 2,000 or 3,000 people listening to you, that is distribution or trust that AI will have a hard time gaining. In fact, once you have that distribution of that trust, you can use AI to create as many products as you want. Combined with the entire no-code wave that's going on on the other side, you can be an entrepreneur with a fraction of the cost of what it costs today to run a business and hire engineers and designers. Finally, you could also just choose a job where AI just doesn't have enough training data. But this is, I feel, a race where you're trying to race and you know somebody's constantly feeding training data because unfortunately the internet has so much data, it's hard to compete. In fact, real-world jobs are a much safer bet than digital jobs and this is against what Naval said. In fact, yes, I am taking a counter stance to what Naval said because in the light of extreme evidence, you must be able to change your mind. Now, I know nobody in this country is talking about this. We're talking about politics, we're talking about sports, we're talking about all sorts of rubbish. 
Nobody is talking about how AI is going to come and wipe away so many jobs that most of the white collar workforce does today. That's 18.1 million people that make up most of our economy whose jobs or most of whose jobs are going to be wiped out in less than a decade. We're not talking about this, which is why I'm going to work very hard to give you that escape velocity. I cannot guarantee you will have a job forever. I cannot guarantee that what you do will work forever, but I can help you outsmart and outspeed AI in the time being. Follow me on my YouTube and I'm going to keep telling you the jobs, the careers, the skills, uh, the mindset to have to outpace this threat that's just around the corner. Now, if you want to try out the text version of OpenAI for yourself, go to this website, log in or create an account and start creating. DALI 2, which is the image generator, which I feel will have far more of an impact on your life, is going to be out soon to the general public. I got access a little earlier. But when that's out, make sure you try it. And if you follow this channel, obviously, you will learn more about this space and how to, uh, how to still succeed in this crazy world that's about to come.